So we're going to cover a couple of different topics in this video. I did want to talk about Palestine, but I did come across this article. This article came out today, and this is uh, according to The Hill, right? Johnson & Johnson says that the booster provides 94% protection against uh, C-19. And when you actually look at what they're referring to and how often they would expect people to take these injections. It says, according to the company's phase three study, a two month booster shot resulted in 100% protection against severe cases and 94% against protection against symptomatic cases in the US. And I would say, I don't know, because Israel doesn't seem to reflect any of that data as they have more cases after you know, jabbing 33% of their country, they're steadily seeing cases rise and they kind of gaslight the people and saying, well, only 33% of you are triple vaxxed, you know, the rest of you are spreading the disease. And it's just like, I talked about this in a couple of my last videos where if at any point in time, you know, you choose to hop off this little Ferris wheel of get vaccinated, it continues to spread. You get the second dose, it continues to spread. You get the third dose, it continues to spread. And then now they're like, you need to get the fourth dose because you're you're spreading the disease. And it's like, at what point do you realize that maybe these people are not being honest with you? And so, of course, this is the new information coming out. Why? Because this is what they're going to push on the people. They're going to tell the people, oh, you need to take, I know we said every, every year, and then it was every eight months, and then it was every six months. And I thought it was going to be down to three, but it looks like we're already whittled down to two. And by <laughs> before the year is over, we'll probably be, they'll probably be telling you people that you need monthly injections of their genetic of their gene therapy drug. This is basically where we're at. Of course, all links is going to be a couple of these articles that we're going to take a look at. Another one is FDA decision to limit. So recently you heard that the FDA ruled it was like 16 to two saying no boosters and then today they stated that they were going back to the drawing board about whether or not you should need boosters and of course israel again talking about where did where did this whole thing for the third booster come from came from israel because like i said i'll post a link to my original video talking about israel and how this whole thing got started between israel and pfizer you can take a look at that video so, of course, Dr. Fauci says FDA vote against COVID booster shots, not the end of the story. And so, of course, you know, some of these scientists and doctors and people that work at the FDA, they're like, there's no, there's no studies, there's no finding, there's no medical reason why you should be handing out boosters. And they were like, look at Israel. Literally, the FDA was like, look at Israel. They're handing out boosters out there like candy and they ain't doing anything for them. But this is not the point. The point is, is to get people to comply. And the more you can get people to comply in this sort of an environment, it makes it easier to manipulate human behavior, which is the ultimate goal, which is to get people to comply with what is coming. These are just the incremental steps to get people where they want them to be. And so if you really have to demoralize these people to give up their freedom, to give up their bodily autonomy about what they will allow injected into them. And of course, the rate at which this will take place. You know, for most people, they were like, just take this two weeks to slow the spread to here's your monthly injection. And this is where we're at. And people wonder why people don't believe the science. This is because the, the goalpost keeps getting moved. The science keeps changing. Yesterday's science is tomorrow's conspiracy theory, right? And so for all for a lot of people who were talking about this in the very beginning, they were just like, you're just a bunch of anti-vaxxers, you know, right-wing Republicans, you know, you must be a Trumper. You've got to be some sort of a white supremacist to believe any of this stuff. And then a couple of months later, it all comes out. And then they're literally the people who are pro, you know, all of this stuff, just kind of like a march, you know, lockstep. And they just kind of move with whatever the state It's literally, you know, for all these people that complain about people who believe in religion, the state has become your God, the state and whatever the state says, whatever the, the science says is your religion. And a video I posted uh, showing this exact same thing, but you know, people you know, acting in this cult like behavior 
and it's just very astonishing to see this you know in you know quote unquote our modern times where we imagine we are so much better than you know the people that came before us 50 60 years ago who went to church on a regular basis and so i had talked about that i wanted to talk about palestine and of course one of the things that they had said was that in certain areas where the palestinians are not allowed in unless they're vaccinated and to palestine's credit it may be for their for their benefit unknowingly you know they're locking these palestinians out there like if you don't if you if you don't take the the vaccine well then you can't come in to israel you can't go into any of these crowded areas and when you compare cases in palestine who are just very unvaccinated and you compare them to israel which is super vaccinated you'd be surprised and so there's a little quote here that i want to talk about it says vaccines are the key but they're not enough israel is trying to slow down the wave without resorting to new lockdowns which prime minister naftali bennett uh, says would would take an economic toll and destroy the future of the country which is why i said even when you look at america Right, all through Trump's presidency, every everywhere you looked was cases, cases, cases all over. But when you look at the cases now under Joe Biden, by comparison to the cases under Donald Trump, they're literally threefold, along with the deaths. There are more deaths now under Joe Biden post vaccine than there were pre vaccine under Donald Trump. But yet the only time that you hear about cases is in relation to the unvaccinated. As Joe Biden says, this is a pandemic of the unvaccinated. Unfortunately, Israel can't say that because they really don't have an unvaccinated population to blame on the spread of the virus. So who do they turn to? Like I said in my video, link will be at the top. They turn to the double jab. Then they say the double jab are the ones that are spreading the virus because they haven't taken their, their booster shot. And so it goes on to say, it says, on Israel's doorstep, the vaccination rate is much lower in Israel-occupied West Bank and the Gaza Strip. Only 8% of Palestinians have been fully vaccinated. Palestinians are very weary of certain brands of vaccines and ample supply, like, for example, AstraZeneca, the one that they were gaslighting on TV, talking about it causes all these blood clots. And yet you're seeing the exact same thing with both the Pfizer, the Moderna, and as well as the Johnson & Johnson. It says, while Pfizer's BioNTech vaccine is in short supply for the Palestinians, it says, but the Palestinian population is not a source of transmission in Israel. Did you hear that? But the Palestinian population is not a source of transmission in Israel. Only vaccinated, uh, only vaccinated Palestinians are given permit to enter into Israel and Israel settlements. So what does Palestine look like in terms of their cases? Well, let's take a look. And as you can see, they've got an average now is like non-existent, right? And of course, it only goes up to uh, the beginning of August. <laughs> but as you can see, the COVID is not existent in Palestine. It's not that they're not testing. You can see the test down here, right? You can see how many tests they're doing. You can see their vaccination rate. Their vaccine, their fully vaccination rate is almost non-existent. It's at 10.8 percent. It's at a uh, 12.1%, 1% with 27.6% of people having only one dose. So they have a very low vaccination rate. And so what's their test positivity rate? It's around 20%. But how many people are testing positive for COVID? And as you can see, there haven't been a lot. As you can see, the seven-day average was 25. These are the deaths, excuse me. These are deaths. You have deaths of COVID, almost non-existent in Palestine, and then let's take a look at the cases, right? And as you can see, 2,000 cases, not a lot. At the peak, they were averaging a seven day of 1,700 in the very much unvaccinated Palestine. And so, you, as you can see, the very stark comparison between the two. And this was one of the articles that I had talked about last time where I had said, you know, just back in August, overwhelmingly the vast majority of the people who were entering the hospital were vaccinated 60 percent of, of COVID patients in the hospital are fully vaccinated and this was around the time where the prime minister in israel said all oh, you got to get triple vaxxed all you double vaxxers are out there spreading spreading the disease well who's calling he's like all oh, you guys are out there spreading the disease and this was the article that talked about it chiefly which was a grim warning which i did um, a video talking about as well so there's a lot of video there's a lot of articles here there's a lot of content and even we're seeing in places like for example in america where even navy seals by the hundreds hundreds of navy seals 
are risking being blocked for deployment after failing to get vaccinated. So like I said before, you have a large part of the U.S. military that doesn't want to get vaccinated. And as a result, as a result these individuals are risking their job. They're risking deployment. Of course, many of them are looking for a religious exemption. But like I said, even though the exemption exists, the people are being obviously very stingy when it comes to the exemptions about whether or not they're they're going to give you an exemption, etc. It's just typically not going to happen. So there's a there's a current lawsuit lawsuit. You have several hundred Navy SEALs. You've got Marines. You've got you know fighter pilots. You've got I think eight hundred thousand of just the army that have not taken it. And so this is basically where we're at. You know, it has absolutely nothing to do with the science. I try to review as much of the articles as I can with the statistics, talk about this to get people to see that this has absolutely nothing to do with the disease, it has nothing to do with the effectiveness and that they can show you that it's effective. This is just not the case. Anyway, I'm going to leave it here. Might do some other articles. There is another article here that I wanted to talk about, but we'll probably do that in another video. All links, as always, are going to be in the description box. And we're going to leave it here for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Of course, I'm here in gloomy Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, I'm going to be here for the past couple of months, so most of my videos will probably look uh, like this. Feel free, of course, to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll check you out next time.